Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We're celebrating Halloween week here. What better way to do that than talk about doom metal? Yeah, baby. Right. So uh, we're, we're talking about five killer debuts, classic doom debuts. We're doing an album war and the combatants are cathedral's debut the forest of equilibrium from the uk <laughs> from here in the states saint vitus self-titled debut also from here in the states from the virginia washington dc area pentagram call it relentless or call it pentagram it's been called both it's their debut album let's go over to sweden for epicus <laughs> Dunicus, metallicus candle mass and then one last one from the states the awesome debut from trouble psalm nine yes <laughs> yeah these are four great five great albums really hard to rank these but we've been listening to them for the last couple of weeks and we've got to put them in some kind of order so uh ladies first karen take us through your five four three two one i'll be keeping score so okay we'll come we're up doing with all at once yeah do all five all at once <laughs> uh this was so hard the yeah. only one that I had for sure throughout this whole time was my number five. Uh, up until we started taping, I was flip flopping on. Oh, do I? I had anyway. <laughs> my number five is very easy. It was Saint Vitus. Um, I'm not a big fan of this record. Everyone else seems to be. I remember I picked it up because it was on SST Records, and I soon learned that. Everything SST released wasn't all that good. Uh, some of you guys know, some might not know that SST was founded by the guitarist of Black Flag, Greg Ginn. It was his label. I was hungry for more of that stuff. And uh, I got St. Vitus. So, yeah, I was a little disappointed. I went back and I revisited it and the production is just horrible. And here I am, uh, someone who loves bad production i don't care if you could play guitar or not i miss punk rock but this annoys the shit out of me like <laughs> you could say that i mean the lyrical themes are all you know a cult and and they you know but they don't it sounds very juvenile it doesn't sound like um there's no energy i mean venom can't play and venom have the same lyrical uh themes but they're charismatic and uh i i really you know i don't get that from from uh, St. Vitus. It falls a little flat for me. And it just sounds like a bunch of stoners messing around in their garage. So <laughs> that's that. Um, my fourth album, I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for this. Candle Mass, <laughs> I'm going to say. Ooh. But it's not like I don't like it. I love the record. All of these, it's like splitting hairs. So, um, I'm going to say Candlemas because uh, it's a classic, obviously, but sometimes um, it, to me, it can sound a little dated um, with the synthesizers, uh, but They're that's awesome. neither here nor there. I just feel like uh, sometimes the vocals get a little hokey. Sometimes it's not as heavy as I want it to be, um, but I do love it. I do. Don't please don't get it twisted. I'm trying to figure out why i would put this at number four um i love demon's gate uh it has a great pace the drums are cool you don't hear a lot of double bass in doom i appreciated that um mm. again maybe it's from the, the 80s like that was popular back then i do remember this album not being a big sensation when it was released in what 86 uh everyone was looking for more thrash more punky kind of stuff and Candle Mass wasn't it, but I, I think that double bass comes from that era when it was really just starting to happen. And the synthesizers bug the shit out of me. They could have done something so much cooler with other kinds of uh, keyboards, and they they went with that. Uh, however, Sorcerer's Pledge, uh, this the synths don't really fit, but I still love that song. Um, Blackstone Wielder, the vocals float on top of the song. And uh, I love the changes. It keeps it interesting. And that's the whole thing for the record. It changes, the pace changes. It just keeps it interesting. 
interesting. Plenty of eye rolling, string bending goodness, which is what I need in fucking doom metal. Okay, I'm moving along here. Number three, trouble. Psalm nine. Um, more eye rolling riffs. Definitely, uh, people say that this band is Christian band. I don't really see that. I see biblical themes in their lyrics. I don't pro God, pro Satan. I don't. I don't pick that up at all. Maybe. I'm uh, incorrect. It's um, very traditional metal with a guitar, you know, a doom guitar tone. And that's cool with me. The vocals, the drums, the changes. It's very, um, I say, leans more with traditional metal with a, uh, a doom guitar tone. Um, Tempter is fast paced, still has that tone. Uh, the changes are great. I love it again. Uh, Victim of the Insane is 100% doom, and the keys per fit perfectly. So, hello, Candle Mass, okay? Trouble was, what, two years earlier than that? I mean, all right. <laughs> and uh, Brave Ulysses, I know it's a cover song. It's a great song by Cream, but my three favorite genres of music are punk, metal, and psych. So when the psych and the metal combine together, it's great. And they really do a great job on that uh, cover. It sounds like trouble. It's not like they're trying to copy uh, Cream, you know, literally. It sounds like trouble singing this song and it, it's got that groove and it still has that psych element. And I'm so there for that. Um, number two is Cathedral. Ah, oh, I love this record. I love this record. It is so great. It is so heavy. Lee Dorian sounds so fucking grotesque and um, <laughs> evil. And like, he sounds like some uh, God being released, like some evil being being released and like pushing his pain all to the mortals that surround him. He's a part, his voice is an instrument in this uh, album. It's to me, it's just as important as anything else. And um, I, I uh, Ebony tears when he's like, opens up. I, that's like one of my favorite metal moments ever. Uh, I love Lee Dorian. He's definitely somebody I look up to. This album is so heavy. It can be really slow, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The first song is over 11 minutes long, but there's enough changes and um, to keep it interesting. And there's a lot of uh, weird effects in here. There's keyboards, there's plan, uh, pan flutes, there's acoustics, the layering of the vocals, the leads that are just perfect, just here and there. Um, it all fits so well. It, nothing sounds out of place. It's just a fucking evil record. And I dig it. I dig it. And especially from 1991. That's amazing. So guess what? We got one left. And that is uh, Pentagram. Great record. Classic Doom. Everything about it is what Doom Metal should be. I love the lyrical content. I love how he feels like, you know, Bobby is really telling a story. He is uh, not an accomplished singer, but he's a good singer. And he, it's perfect for this um, for this genre. They kind of float above the, the lyrics. Um, I mean, excuse me, the music. Relentless is my favorite track. But then again, we've got the ghoul. Um, uh, what's the one that's not my favorite, but it's the catchiest one, Sign of the Wolf. Um, it's a pretty good track. It's definitely catchy, uh, but there's some great funny moments in there. I, I mean, I think the vocals are can be funny and campy, and I feel the same way about Cathedral. Um, when he's like, no turning back. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, and it makes me happy, and it puts smiles on my face. Um, Relentless is still is fast paced, but it's still very doom. And I think this is an excellent example for anybody who's not really getting into doom or who's thinking about it. Start with Pentagram. Um, they're kind of, you know, for they're easily digestible in the sense where they're not too slow. The guitars are just right. You really get a feel for what the genre sounds like. And um, I love, like I said, the lyrical content is amazing. It's a cult, just like every other, for the most part, Doom record. Uh, but I really feel like um, Bobby Liebling is telling a story and painting a picture and can take you there. And uh, that's it. Number one. Bada bing, baby. <laughs> All right.
Yeah, I think uh, for me, I think the pen, even though like other than the Cathedral album, which came out in the early 90s, I mean, most of these all were like right around the middle, mid to late 80s. They're all kind of clustered together. But I think out of all of them, Pentagram is the one that sounds like it could have come from the 70s. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think it holds up. I think um, Cathedral stands the test of time, too. Uh, I think Trouble and not as much as as. I don't I, candle mass sounds sometimes a little dated to me. I when candle mass first came out, I picked it up. It's not thrash. It's not punky enough. It's too slow. What's next? Okay, so I kind of blew them off, and I'm stupid. <laughs> now I got into them later on, but maybe I got like you know, and I same thing with Saint Vitus. Pentagram's so. definitely the oldest band. Oh yeah, and they're the only band that like recorded a bunch of shit in the seventies. You know, yeah, not like albums, but like they were around doing shit for pretty much the whole decade. In right? Some, Why did it take so long? Like, I know they recorded part of that album in the seventies. What took them so long to complete it? I don't know. Couldn't get a record deal, and you know, back then, uh, not a lot of bands would self-produce and put out their own albums. So if you didn't have a record deal, you didn't have a record. You know, so Hard to do back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, very different uh, now. Anybody put out an album? Yeah. I got into them via the uh, these last awesome days here, last days here. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, that relapse did, which that's still my favorite pentagram stuff, and that's all from like 73, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, and that shit's yeah. fucking amazing. Really? Like, yeah, that was all like a decade before their first album. So, yep, yeah, interesting, really weird recorded history for that band. So, I also <laughs> want to say while they were on a, a, a topic mm -hmm. of um. Uh, bands not being able to record themselves, you know, they need, they needed a record deal. I, I think Lee Dorian is an excellent example of not having to do that. He is, in my mind, the epitome of DIY. Uh, he took advantage of a, a program that England was having that Margaret Thatcher put into play to get people off the dole and to start their own business. He started Rise Above Records to put out records, his Napalm Death, and it just took off from there. And uh, he, I think, um, I don't know. I, I admire the guy. I think, you know, DIY for life, dude. And he. Yeah, but they, they came out on Earache Records. They were they were signed to Earache. He, he didn't do his right. own label until afterwards. Right, right. And he he's, did he's still, out. I mean, Rise Above is still putting out great oh, stuff. Oh, still going strong, yeah. And yeah. Rise Above Relics is unearthing all sorts of cool stuff from the vaults. So. Think of all the good bands he's introduced to the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, he's, he's put his fucking time in for sure. Plus, yeah. Napalm Death, man. Oh, guy's great. Yeah, the original guy. <laughs> yep. All right, so Pentagram takes the early lead. Craig, how are you? How do you see these five albums? All right, thanks. I gotta put my glasses on because I scribbled these uh, the other day. So, uh, I, I, I do enjoy all these albums, but you know, just in some, in some different levels, and uh, so. Some, somebody has to somebody has to come in fifth yeah. so uh for me just personal opinion i just i have cathedral as number five and it's only because um i prefer lee dorian's vocals on ethereal mirror and carnival bazaar i just i like the way that the band evolved a little bit um after the first album it's just that's just my my personal uh personal uh preference with with their sound however i do still uh, soul sacrifice is a is a really good song a, a funeral request i liked a lot and uh as karen said the first uh the first uh, with what once it kicks into uh is it commiser commiserating commiserating the cells what does it say celebration yeah, i can't read my writing but once it once the sludgy part uh yeah it's you know sludgy in that and speeds up i i do like it i think it's it's a good building block i think for just what they for what they were to become and and i i think if if you the listener are more of a fan of of that that style of vocals you you would rank it higher than than what i have so for me it's just it's it's just personal preference that that i have it at, at number five <clears throat> my number four i went with saint vitus also and i think my notes that i had said uh minimal minimal minimalistic uh uh recording so yeah not not the best uh recording and i and no wine no wino on this so that kind of uh put my put my uh 
interest down a little bit. How, however, um, the song St. Vitus, I thought was, you know, nice riff and everything. The vocals, eh, you know, not, not, not as my favorite, but uh, white magic, black magic and uh, burial at sea. I, I liked, I liked those uh, on, on the album and, and or my, in my notes, I wrote haunted house music. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, said, uh, so I thought, I thought that it, it kind of sounded a little bit like that, but uh but still enjoyable nonetheless, I think. But again, I think more better things from them were to come in subsequent years. Uh, my number three, this was a kind of a revelation. I know I knew about the band, but you know, I and and I uh, watched their documentary and uh, uh, some uh, some years ago. So I I had pentagram at that number three, and I um, but this this was really close between putting this for me between the three and two. And uh, really enjoyable sounding. And I actually wrote here, uh, sound 70s, and I put in parentheses, uh, dust, you know, kind of in some some of the, just the way some of the music sounded, it could, it, it uh, and knowing that uh, Bobby probably, re you know, recorded as a lot, or wrote and recorded a lot of these songs in the 70s, and from seeing that documentary, which if you haven't seen it, uh, last days here i believe it's called it's it's really good and actually really sad in, in, oh, yeah. in some parts but um but nonetheless uh sign of the wolf i i, I wrote down yeah, nice nice riff uh, all your sins i liked a lot uh sinister 20 bucks spin i liked i liked the uh, like that that it was groovy and uh sinister had a nice doomy vibe and uh Death Row, I think I I really enjoyed on this. So this was this was good. This was kind of a a discovery uh, uh, for me. Like a, as I said, I knew about them. Um, maybe some of the later stuff with once uh, Victor Griffin was 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 with, or, or may, maybe um, that's in, in into the nineties, I believe. But um, but this this early one uh, that was pretty that was really good. I did I did enjoy that one. So uh, my my number two. Uh, these these were close between uh, my two and one, but I went with Trouble and uh, uh, R.I.P. to Eric Wagner. Love his voice, and um, just uh, as Karen said, though not terribly doomy or slow. I think starting with uh, the Skull and Run to the Light, that's where they maybe kind of uh, went a little bit more doomy. This is more uh, tradi traditional metal, yeah. like uh, like Karen had said, but just with. Uh, uh, I wrote like not speed, but heavier than bands like Judas Priest and things like that. So it was like a almost like a tweener, but uh, uh, assassin, you know, really nice and really good and fast. Bastards will pay, you know, speedy double bass like that a lot. Um, once you get towards towards the end, that's where it's more doomy, I think, with the uh, end time and and the and the song Psalm Nine, and uh, I I enjoyed their cover too of uh, Tales of Brave Ulysses. I like that they put that they, they put their own spin on it and yeah. not just uh, tried to mimic what Cream uh, what Cream did. And it and it and it's uh, also a pretty bold choice. I think of a song to, to, for them to do. It's not, you know, if, if you're going to do a cream song, just don't do what, I don't need to hear white room or sunshine of your love or, or something. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm much, much, much prefer hearing, uh, hearing a, a, a bolder choice as, as they did. My number one, I went with candle mass and this, I, 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 for just for me, this is one of those, uh, where has this been all my life uh, type albums where, uh, um i didn't discover this until you know actually fairly recently and uh for 86 you know i think it sounds very polished and professional considering it's on a, a small label and that it's a that it's a debut album um mm -hmm. i i really like johan's voice uh love the riffs i think all the songs are really nice and vital and and feels fresh and uh for you know for 1986 this sounded more Black Sabbath and Black Sabbath did in 1986. So I mean, it was, it, it was uh, just a, a very refreshing sound. I mean, my 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 favorite songs are D Demon's Gate, Black Stone Wielder, and A Sorcerer's mm -hmm. Pledge. So yeah. uh, so, uh, but all, all of it's a really really enjoyable album. And again, this is one that uh, uh, again thanks to to Ryan because he and I did the. Uh, uh, 
what was that called? The album uh um, homework assignment. Yeah, homework and, assignment a while ago. Yeah, yeah. A long yeah. time ago. Uh, where where I kind of asked him, I said, Can you assign Candlemas to me? Because I don't know much by then. And uh and I was really happy that really happy that he did. So uh so that that's my number one. Uh, I I I pick Candlemas. But all these are really essential. And I think if you do depending on which way you like your you like your doom you can't go wrong with anything like this especially with a band like trouble like their first five albums you know you really can't go wrong with with a lot of those so uh so there's a lot of good ways for you to go whether you like things really heavy like the way cathedral is or if you more traditional sounding maybe like candle mass with the and then as they became with their uh, more operatic vocals with Messiah, but uh, a lot of a lot of good good stuff to choose from if you're a newbie to this. So, uh, but but for me, Candlemas was my favorite. Yeah, I think the one good thing about all of these bands is like they they had these strong debuts and they continue putting out really good stuff. I mean, there's barely any hiccups in these catalogs when you really look no, at no, them. Not at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cathedral changed a bit. Some people don't yeah. like it, but I like all of it actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, Mr. Canzanari, you're up. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, my number five is St. Vitus. Um, I agree with Karen. You know, sounds like a bunch of guys fucking around in the garage. <laughs> yeah. um, I never had this album, but many years ago, I bought a, speaking of SST records, I bought a compilation tape they put out that had probably half of this St. Vitus album on it and some Black Flag stuff and some stuff by this band called Worm that I really liked. And uh, the West Coast Overkill was on that too. Who They're nowhere near as good as the East Coast Overkill for anybody who's wondering. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, this is good stuff, but it's it's a little, I don't know, I don't want to say juvenile, but... I did say it, yeah. it's juvenile. <laughs> It's a it's a bunch of guys fucking around in the garage. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I don't I don't hate it, but it's it's gotta come in last in this in this uh competition here. So <clears throat> uh, my number four is Trouble Psalm Nine. This is a classic album. I've been listening to this for years. Um Assassin Bastards Will Pay, killer songs. Mm. This is a great album. It's just getting mixed up with some others that I happen to like quite a bit more in uh, this particular, you know, this group. So Trouble is going to be fourth. My number three is Cathedral Forest of Equilibrium. I love this album. I think these guys are kind of uh, the first band in sort of a second wave of doom. You know, I mean, they went lower and slower and heavier than anybody had up until that point. You know, I don't know if they like got a hold of seven string guitars or eight string guitars or tuned way the fuck down or whatever, but everything's got so much bottom on this album and it's just oh, mm. plotting like and not plotting in a bad way, plotting like, you know, it's just fucking heavy. But I do like Ethereal Mirror better. This is not my favorite Cathedral album. Um, I think they they picked it up, you know, for the next one. But Hey, number three. Uh, my number two is Epicus Dumicus Metallicus. This is a killer album. I agree with Craig. You know, it sounds fresh. I think the production was. It was like over the freaking top for that time. I mean, it's just so clear. The drums come through so hard. Like, if you got it loud enough on your stereo, the drums are kicking you in the chest. Sounds awesome. Great riffs. Great guitar tones. Um, I think under the oak, like the intro of that is just, it sounds so good. So heavy, you know, and not, they hadn't slowed things down as much as cathedral did, you know, cause like the older these bands are, the faster they play. It seems like at least in this group, but, uh, you know, this, uh, particular album is one of my favorite candle mass albums. I love the lyrics. There's some good melodies, you know, there's like soaring melodies over top of what's going on. You know, it's still heavy. Killer album. But uh, number one is Pentagram. I uh, I wish this album was in wider release when it came out. You know, I came in really late on this band. Actually, I don't think I'd ever even heard of them 
until Pete mentioned the documentary to me and said, Hey, you know, the story of these guys, you know, this is a very interesting band and they've been through a lot and they've been around forever. And I think this album kills, um, love the guitar tones on this album too. Love the playing. Um, all your sins, I think is my favorite song on this one. Uh, just, just a great album, great band. And I, I think they, uh, they deserve to be a whole lot, you know, more popular than they ever were. So yeah, one pentagram. All right. Wow. Pentagram takes the early lead. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Mr. Count Rathus, what do you got? All right. Well, he just sprang up that, uh, this is the blasting concept. I'm pretty sure that's the compilation that he was talking about. Uh, the SD records. It was called program <laughs> annihilator. It's got, oh, well, this has that overkill is on here. And uh, it starts off with St. Vitus is the first song on here. But uh, huh. and there's only one song, though. Um, what color yeah, is yours, so Kristen? Same... Wasn't yours like a different color? It, mine was a tape. It was black, and it was like a two-hour-long tape. Yeah, you showed, it. you showed it once. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I'd whip it out if I had it around me, but I don't know where it is. But... Yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, same, with, uh, like Karen was saying, the, the production on that St. Vitus it, like when you put all these together and you listen to them all week, th that's definitely the weakest sonically sounding. It it's, it doesn't have much power to it. It's there's some really good songs on there, but I have to go with that as number five. Uh, Cathedral, I'm gonna go number four. Um, I I like the way his vocals sound a little later on. He's he got more of a Tom Warrior vocals, but this is a great album. I've seen them when this came out. They opened up for Napalm Death, which was kind of bizarre watching, you know, something super fast to playing with something slow, but they were really cool. I seen them years later uh open up for Merciful Fate too. All right. And then my number three, uh, nine. Uh great album. It's uh more rocking than uh these other albums, I think. Yeah. This is just probably their best album, I would say. Um really like it. And then I'm going to go Pentagram number two. Uh, like these guys were saying that that documentary is what really put them on the map for me and what made me interested in them. And uh, I have that The Last Days uh, albums with all their old stuff from the 70s. It's a shame that they weren't putting out albums back then. They would have had a way bigger impact when they came out in, oh, in the sure. 80s. It, it just kind of disappeared, you know. But yeah, I got to go with Candle Mass as the number one. Um, when I was a kid, I got the the second album was my first album, and I didn't get this till years later. Um, when he when they did when they reunited with the singer and uh, Tony, I only played on it. I ran out, and I grabbed that album because he, he's guesting on it, and that was it. It opened the doors to me. I had to get every Candle Mass, and they're my favorite of these kind of bands. To me, they're the, the best band in the Doom. Uh, genre, yeah, it's so cool that Johan is back because it's funny he did that out their first album, but they never intended to have him be a member of the band. He just basically got paid to come in and sing, and then they brought Messiah in. So it's how cool is it all these years later that now he's been the the full time lead singer for the last couple albums. And he didn't do yeah, shit that, for like forever. thirty five years. Yeah, he yeah. didn't do yeah. fucking thing. He just disappeared, and then he came back, and he still sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah they're really amazing. productive. <laughs> And and they're cool that they have so they that they've had several singers over the years and that their albums are still like King of the Grey Islands is really good. Oh Rob Lowe, and, great singer. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and Death Magic Doom, you know. I mean, those are those are really good albums. So you got different voices on there and it still keeps your interest in Yeah, there was never a dip of quality regardless of who was singing it. So they always sounded like a candle mass record. Their later albums I like better than that first one. Later I don't know right. if I'm carrying some weird chip on my shoulder from when I was a kid or what, you know, but I I like their later albums better. And that was with Ralph. I had, my first album was Nightfall, the second album that I got from them, and I loved it right off the bat. But then I kept going forward, and I never got Epicus Dumicus to like a bunch of years later. I finally like kind of went back a little bit, but uh, yeah, there there's really no bad album in their catalog at all. They got a lot of them. Mm -mm. Cool. All right. Well, we got a tie still. Candle Mass and Pentagram. Rob, you're going to break that tie? What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't think so. It's funny, too, because uh, Craig is very, very close to what I had. Very close. Um, so my first 
My number five is going to be Cathedral. I, unlike a couple people, I guess, I didn't really like Lee Dorian's vocals. I did oh. something about this <laughs> album. I <laughs> love the riffs. The riffs are, are crushing. I mean, Soul Sacrifice, Equilibrium, Serpent Eve, Ebony Tears, all great songs. Ebony Tears is the best Lee Dorian ever. I, just, I can't get into the guy's vocals. I just, it's, and he's like, almost like he's talking. He's not really singing. That makes know? it sound even more sinister. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't hate it. I just didn't get into it more than the other albums. Now you'd probably like uh, their late, their later ones, or you know, once mm -hmm. after after I that. Would agree. Yeah, you know, Cathedral yeah. was a band that I never, for some reason, I've only recently gotten into them. And this next band, I got into them because I think Ryan had mentioned them a couple of times on shows, so I, I had investigated them anyway. And I actually like the music on it. I agree with you guys. The, the um. The production sucks. I mean, yeah. and, and it, they sound like everything sounds buried. It sounds buried. It doesn't sound, there's no openness to it or anything. Buried at sea. I do like the fuzzy part of it. You know, it's it's got that fuzz and uh, the killer, you know, like the um, psychopath and the the main song, St. Vitus, Bury Art Sea with the Wah Wah and great killer drums on that. I mean, it's a great album, I think, but I just, yeah, production on it, not good. So my my top three I struggled with. Um, so I'm going to probably break this one. I like this album a lot. I do. I like it a lot. Um, Pentagram was a band I didn't really get into until much later. Like people were just talking about the certain, certain bands. You know, I, I didn't get into them until later. And, and like you guys were saying, like I even put a question mark. 1985 this came out. So, you know, I did some research on it. But it sounded like 70s, uh, you know, metal and doom. Yeah. And But, I mean, I, most of this album, the Fuzz intro and Death Row, yeah. you know, Sign of the Wolf is great. Relentless was great, that upbeat riff. Mm -hmm. I probably, nobody mentioned this song, though, the Diced. Or the Deist. I don't know how you say it, Deist, Diced. It, it's it's very repetitive, but I had, I you know, I was like, I'm working on <laughs> oh, this. And it, the whole song is pretty much like that. And then I liked the uh, Dying World. It had that opening sound like Neon Nights. You yeah. can feel I can I get the feeling of a, a a lot of Sabbath influence on that song. So that's my number three. Number two and number one was the hardest for me. Um, I love both these bands a lot. I've been into them longest out of all these bands. I'm going with Candle Mass for my number two. Candle Mass has been around, like you guys said, for a long time. Uh, I have Pendulum, I have Door to Doom, I have King of Grey Islands, and this album is no different. It's just a great album. Everything on here is great, especially Under the Oak. Somebody else mentioned that. Killer riff, killer lead on there. Uh, <clears throat> Sorcerer's Pledge, straight, yeah. you know, slow, and then bang, you get hit, you know. I, I like the sense on this, too. I thought the sense was nice on this, you know, on that last song. Uh, another and again, this is a band. Candle Mass has been around, and I just you know it's one of my favorite Doom bands. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Doom bands I like that are not, we didn't even talk about because of that on these. You know, these are all the debuts of these bands. But there's a lot of bands from the '90s that I like, and and of course the 2000s, some really heavy bands. Uh, and then of course my number one's going to be Trouble. Trouble, I actually got into in the '80s. I had a friend of mine who was into this band, and he introduced me to them. And, uh, you know, Distortion Field, Simple Mind Condition, I have those albums. Uh, production is great on this album. I think it's the best produced album out of all of them. I love the yeah. cover. Cover was great. Eric Wagner was great. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2021. Um, and like I said, all, you know, it's weird because, I don't know, I think Craig said it, that it's, you know, it's got doomish elements, but it's really more of a hard rocker or a metal album. It's, it's traditional not really metal. completely doom. I mean, it's got the doom elements. Don't get me wrong. I just think that, um, you know, it, it could be mixed in with a lot of, you know, heavy metal bands. If you're not into like, you know, that pure doom, this is definitely a place maybe to start if, you know, if you're trying to get into this kind of music. And, um, you know, every song on here is great. I'm, I'm looking at my notes. I mean, uh, I can't read. Oh, Basses Will Pay. Fast upbeat, great bass. The breakdown has that Sabbath sound. 
You know, same thing with the next song, Paul Lucifer, which I love. Yeah. You know, they're talking about the Book of Revelation, another ripping guitar. You know, great jam on that one, too. And like you said, Karen, a lot of this has uh, a lot of Bible verses, Matthew and all this, all, all the books of uh, in yeah. the Bible. That's what I whether or not it is pro or not. I don't know. It just sounds care. like it's there. It's not preachy. You know what I mean? No, it's not preachy. But, you know, yeah. all the bands that I mean, even the uh, Sabbath, you know, was doing it, too. You know, Didn't they know. used to refer to trouble as white metal, not black metal? Oh yeah, that it was that it was <laughs> uh, so that, it, that it was uh, more positive or or something, but not overtly Christian. Yeah. But definitely, uh, definitely all all great albums. I want to add, uh, Rob, that your opinion of, of um, vocals is not uncommon. A lot of people couldn't get into cathedral just because of that. And I'm into like, you know, death growls and all that other stuff. It's it's not that I just found that his voice was kind of grating for me. It's just me, you know, it's just my, it took my me a while to get used to his vocals also. But I, I love I just, it. Like, yeah, I totally you know, get it. I totally get I that. mean, listen, there was a part of my life I didn't even like death growls at all or that kind of vocal stuff until I listened to Opeth and then that's what turned me. Mm -hmm. yeah, super time. original super original vocals though for you know oh, it's kind of weird how, how much he changed oh, yeah. as it went on and he kind of went to more of like a tom warrior voice where it wasn't as original so i, I like that it was original when you hear it you know who it is because oh, yeah. no one really sings like that yeah and on this record it's like the layering of his vocals are really cool i just think all the little extras they threw in there really suit the mood of the record i, I was so nervous coming out the gate i really didn't get a a chance to like express myself, but yeah, I I really love the layering of the vocals on that uh, record. And one thing about the trouble, uh, kind of the style of the music, I always saw the first trouble album because it there's a lot of doom on it, but it's not as obvious as some of these other records. I think that right. it's almost like heaven and hell by black Sabbath. That's really not a doom album either, even though you can call a lot of their early 70s stuff doom. And I think that the trouble album is very similar to the style of metal that's on heaven and hell. Cause a lot of the songs are a little faster paced and it's not very slow. I mean, there's a couple slower tunes, but yeah, it's and definitely about rules too. Cause they, they go back and forth pretty yeah. Pretty yeah. on that album. It's like slow riffs, fast riffs, and it's, the transitions are fantastic. Yeah. Right, right. I think "Victim of the Insane" is super doomy, but yeah, yeah right. the changes keep it interesting for sure. Yeah. But come the skull and run to the light, then they kind of slowed it down. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, big time. yeah. Skull's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ryan. How do you see these five? All right, well, this one was tough because uh, I do like all these albums a lot. Uh, really like this kind of metal in general. So. Uh... <laughs> Number five, it's the only one I don't own because every time I find it, it goes for a lot of fucking money. Uh, <laughs> I'm not willing to spend what it goes for. Uh, is I'm going to put St. Vitus number five. I do like this album, but uh, I was a little late to hearing it because you know I only heard it online stuff because I can't find a copy. Uh, and honestly, with this, even though I like this album, uh, I just like a lot of other St. Vitus albums a lot more. Which with these five albums, these represent for the most part like some of my favorite stuff from these respective bands, but not the St. Vitus one, like Born Too Late, Mournful Cries, V, and Die Healing, I all think are much more interesting albums. And I want to listen to St. Vitus, usually like Born Too Late or uh, V or Five, I'll throw on all the time, but like I never really have the urge to listen to the first one. It does kind of sound like people fucking around in their garage. Uh, <laughs> I don't really consider that much of a turnoff. Uh, the production does suck, but that doesn't like that doesn't really bother me because I like a lot of shit that sounds like absolute fucking murky bullshit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just musically, it just doesn't hold my attention. Yeah, is as, uh, as much as the other four, although it is good. Like I don't want I want to clarify it's a good, it's quite a good album, but uh, I think the other four are a lot better, and I think a lot of other later Saint Vitus albums were a lot better. Uh, like if someone was going to come up to me and be like, I want to get into Saint Vitus. I would never recommend the first album. Uh, I'd probably say Born Too Late or uh, Die Healing or, you know. And it, so the first one, too, was uh, Scott Riggers, the original vocalist, who I think is great. Uh, but as alluded, uh, Wino came in <clears throat> later on, and I think he's probably the more liked vocalist, probably the more capable vocalist. Uh, but I did see St. Vitus once at the bar St. Vitus in Manhattan, while, or Brooklyn, while it was still there, fortunately gone now. And they played the song St. Vitus. <laughs> and it was with Scott Riggers on vocals. So that was kind of like this triad of like, you know, all the planets aligned and, you know, what, 
What? <laughs> I, time stopped and clocks started going backwards and all cats started meowing and, you know, cats and dogs raining from the heavens. You know, that was cool. Uh, so number, uh, so after that one, now it gets tough. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> number four, I'm going to go with Cathedral. Uh, this is hands down my favorite Cathedral album, too. I'm one of the people where I like what they went to after this, but this album is the heaviest and the weirdest they ever were. And his vocals, as as alluded, are insane. And I like that. I like the fact that it's just like it's just demented. Uh the later stuff was great. It really good. They were always a good band. Like Pete said, these guys, none of these bands really ever fucked up, I think. Uh there's no like cold lakes or like St. Angers in any of these respective discographies. You know, these guys were always pretty consistent throughout the decades. But uh yeah, it's just I like the other three albums more. So this one's got to come in number four. Man, this is probably the slowest and the heaviest and one of the nastiest of these four albums. Right. It's on. just it's just crushing. I like that. I like the uh the absolute fucking nastiness. And I'm gonna throw in a little mention because I don't know if we'll get mentioned otherwise, but there was a little bit where uh, Lee Dorian formed a very short-lived band with a bunch of guys from the band Sun, Sun O, Sun O, mm. uh Connie and Burning Witch. They put out one album, I think, in 2002 called Teeth of Lions, Roll the Divine. So we're mm -hmm. talking about all oh, the songs, 11 minutes, the songs, 10 minutes. The first song on this album is 30 fucking minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and it is it is slower than time itself. Oh, yeah. And his vocals, on, Lee's vocals on this are just, to me, this is my favorite Lee Dorian vocal performance, speaking of that. He is just sick. It's like he's on his fucking deathbed and somebody's administering him last rite. So I just wanted to throw that in there because... Yeah, you had mentioned that on another show months and months ago. Yeah. It's like I got to get that, and I ordered it the next day. It's really good. It's, it's really good, good, but it's woo. It's it's you talk right. about fucking slow. I just okay. want to throw that in there. Uh, I had number I had number three, two, one figured out, and like literally, like as we started to uh, like an hour before we started to do this, I was listening to the albums again, and I flip flopped. Me too. And I'll probably flip flop as soon as it's done because these two are. Uh, fuck, I'm with you. Yeah. So, was, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go with number three. I'm going with Pentagram. Uh, I got into these guys when, uh, like like <sighs> most of you guys have said, these guys always had kind of shit luck. They, they started in like 71 or 72. Uh, they had some early names. Uh, Bobby and some of the guys did something under a name, Bedemon. Bedemon. Uh, they were also called uh, Macabre, not the Chicago Macabre, another Macabre. So they, they were around almost from the start of the 70s. I think Pentagram formally started around like 72, 73, they could just never get it together to release an album. They put out some demos. And Relapse actually did a compilation around 2002 called uh, First Days Here, which to me is still my favorite pentagram stuff. It's all the 70s material they did. And it's some of the greatest fucking music from the 70s, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it took to 1985 to release an album. So when you listen to this and you're like, this sounds very 70s. Well, yeah, it was written and I think recorded. And, you know, the soul of these songs all dates back like a decade prior. But, uh, man, this is just a uh, fucking... Victor Griffin's guitar tone on this album could strip the fucking white off your teeth, man. It is oh, yeah. nasty. So Bobby good. sounds great. And he yeah. is kind of like an Ozzy kind of vocalist. Like, he's not a, like like a Rob Halford or Jeff Tate where he's like a great vocalist. But he's charismatic. Uh, just carries the songs. I always kind of thought of Pentagram as like, you know, people tend to compare them to Black Sabbath because, you know, when they started, there was nobody else. But they always kind of reminded me more of like an early, like, Grand Funk Railroad Stooges MC5 like they're very in a they're very an American sounding band and kind of like this nasty drinking shit beer blue collar kind of way you know like Sabbath is like some fancy English lager and like these guys are like Genesee Cream Ale you know of like doom metal just just these nasty blue collar like hanging out in the alley band you know probably bum a smoke off you I don't know great fucking album Probably of their all their solo out or sorry not solo all their studio albums. This is probably my favorite. Uh, this the next one uh, is close, but this probably was my favorite. Uh, and like I'm not even gonna bother naming songs because on all of these albums, you know, it's they just you throw them on, you let the album go. You know, I never like yeah. put them on playlists or anything. So I'm going. I don't, know, I don't know if I can unsee now this thought of Pentagram, Bobby Liebling hanging out in the corner of a street a street corner with a Jenny Cream Ale and a cigarette. Yeah. Because they're, they're like, cigarette. hey, man, you got a cigarette? <laughs> I, mean, I love the shit out of Sabbath, but Sabbath had like that English air to them, you know, like uh, these guys don't. They just sound like they're hanging out on a Baltimore street corner, bumming smokes and drinking shit beer. Uh, it's very American. I, I dig that. I'm actually so you, you, some of you guys mentioned the uh, the documentary. Uh, I'm actually in that. 
they announced the show with uh, the band of Devil's Blood, who I loved. It was at Webster Hall in Manhattan. And I was a big Pentagram fan at the time. I think it was 2009. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm going to go see them. Uh, I didn't really know at the time, like a lot of the backstory, like Bobby's drug problems and like how, you know, the, their ability to get together and then they fell apart and get back together. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll just go see them. So I'm right up front against the stage and all the footage they have from like that performance that like ends the document. You could see me right up front just being like a fucking maniac. But uh, it wasn't until a while later I'm watching. I'm like, oh, I didn't really know like all of this backstory, you know, because as great of a band as they are, it's kind of, uh, you know, they, they they go totally under the radar. So it doesn't surprise me where someone's like, oh, shit, I only heard them like in 2005, you know, even though they're around since the fucking 70s. But uh, that's my number three. Number two is going to be trouble uh i think this is their best album i think you guys are dead on where it's not really doom but it is a little doom uh but some of the transitions between slower and heavier parts and faster parts are fucking amazing uh you know i was able to see in 2014 in uh, montreal i saw uh the skull and uh, they did a lot of trouble songs at uh, the wings of metal fest which is a great memory to have so uh you know, they did. I think I don't recall if they did some old like stuff from the band The Skull too. But I think it was a lot of trouble tunes, and it was fucking great. Eric Wagner's a great vocalist. Uh, fucking uh, Rick and uh, Bruce uh, Bruce Franklin's and Rick Wartell's guitar playing awesome. Uh, I think Rob, you said the production on this album, it's fucking awesome. It's so heavy. It's such a good every song on this is such good album yeah. or such a good song. Uh, I do like their other stuff. They actually had I think it was from nineteen ninety. If I can find it. Uh, they had an album from the '90s that really went under the radar. Just called a self-titled album called "Just Called Trouble." My oh, that's a great album. album. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fucking amazing. But some of the later stuff, it's definitely like, okay, that's doom metal, you know, slower and more. What you expect? Mm -hmm. uh, this one really isn't. But I don't know. I think it's probably their best. I love it. I throw this on all the time. I think you're right when you say it's got that like heaven and hell kind of sound to it, where it's like slow and fast, you know, in equal measure. So I'm going with that. But number one has to be. Uh yeah, it's gotta be Candle Mass for me. Uh I like yeah, Pete said Nightfall was the first album I heard from them. That's still probably one of my top ten favorite albums of all time. Any band, any genre, fucking perfect. But uh this I put this as their second best album, and it's really close. I love Johan's vocals. The production, like you guys were saying, it is perfect. Uh I've been lucky enough to see them play this album with, with Johan back. Uh I've seen him play, I think, twice now. Uh, I've seen him do Nightfall a couple times with with Johan, and he pulls off all Messiah's vocals very, very well. But to hear him do this whole album straight through, uh, I think I saw in Philadelphia like two years ago. It's some, uh, uh, yeah, I was I was there. Oh, with that's you. right. And I think they yeah. did do this album right at that show. Yes, yes. I saw. I'm, I'm I'm missing up now. What shows I saw them do this, and what shows I saw them do Nightfall. But uh, yeah, when they come out of the gate with like fucking Solitude, and it, like starts off with. I'm sitting here alone in darkness, waiting to be free before the vocal music kicks in and everybody's singing along. Oh, I fucking love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is a, to me, this is a perfect album. I, I put it as a perfect album. Uh, are they my favorite doom band? Eh, yeah, pro probably. Uh, I just fucking love them. I love like the gothic atmosphere, the heaviness of it. I do love the synths. I love all that. I think everything was done a little better on Nightfall. Like that's a absolutely perfect 10 out of 10 out of 10 album, but this is like 9.98 out of 10. So I got to put candle mess number one and the artwork on this is just so fucking cool. That's like that's, I've seen a million Iconic. tattoos and patches and designs. Oh, yeah. Of this and yeah, that's just like this cool as shit. So definitely going to give that credit too. And uh, yeah, it's cool that they brought Johan back because uh, you know, he didn't really do anything for years and he still sounds great. You know, hearing that's him do all those songs now he pulls it off. So cheers to them. Yep. All right. Candle mass has taken the lead. Am I going to disrupt this? We'll see. So <laughs> this was really hard. I really like all of these a lot. And I have, like Karen said earlier, I like her. I've been, I was changing my order over and over and over again. And I'm like, this is crazy. I got to just <laughs> stick to something and just, you know, do it, whatever. So, yeah. So even though I think Craig mentioned something's got to go at number five, just the way it works. Um, I'm going to go with Forest of Equilibrium at number five. I really like it a lot. Get it's, out a of here. it's a seminal <laughs> Doom album. I will admit, I prefer the albums that came after. I love this album, but I think the next two I like even more. To me, uh, 
this maybe has a few too many really, really slow songs, but I, I dig it. I think it's great. I mean, Ebony of Tears is amazing. Funeral Request is amazing. Serpent Eve Equilibrium. There's great songs on here. And, you know, Gary Jennings is a monster riff guy. So, I mean, every one of these bands has a monster riff guy or two in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like Lee's vocals a little bit more starting with the second album. But I still think it's a great album. Something's got to go at number five. Um, if we were talking, you know, second albums by any of these bands, I think Cathedral will be way higher for me. But still, it's great. Uh, I'm going to go with St. Vitus as number four. Yeah, it sounds like shit. <laughs> but these songs are great. They're just so great. I mean, man, David Chandler's guitar is just dripping with fuzz. And like when he kicks in the wah-wah pedal for these solos, it's like, uh, I'm just like, it's like a stoned out like Robin Trower, man. I just, I just freaking love it. Um, stick at that too, Pete. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like, so, you know, and Scott, R Scott Riggers is, he's definitely a different singer than Wino. He's, he's got more of like a punk edge, which, you know, makes this a little bit different than some of their other albums. But man, the psychopath, just like absolutely crushes it just it's slow and it's just like uh so garagey and just really good burial at sea is great there's not a bad song on it imagine this with like a little bit better production because i think the song yeah, it would great. Do. but uh that's my number four I, I love it i think it's great um but i agree with brian i think they did better albums going forward but this was still out of the gate really really good uh god the top three they're tough this is tough i'm gonna go with pentagram uh yeah, this is like one of those bands. I didn't discover them until probably like the early 2000s. And this is like one of those, where's this been, band been all my life type of thing. Because mm -hmm. like you always heard the name, but you could never find their albums or right. CDs in the shops anywhere, right? They're like this kind of like underground band, whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything got reissued by Peaceville or Relapse or whatever. And, you know, I got the, the two compilations too. And it's like, but so good. So 70s sounding, man, Death Row, All Your Sins. I mean, 20 bucks spin is such a killer, groovy slice of doom. I mean, people love it so much that a couple of guys went and created a record label called 20 bucks spin, just an honor <laughs> great band of the song. It's how cool it is. Um, yeah, there's not a bad song on it. The ghoul is great. And it also, just like the St. Vitus, it also sounds really underground and raw. And I think that's really good. And they've got a lot of other really good albums. A lot of other really good albums. Again, I don't think they've ever released a bad one. Even their more recent stuff has just really been great. Uh, yeah, I mean, the top two. Uh, I'm going to go with Candlemas as my number two. I mean, Johan sounds great on here. So many great songs on this. I mean, you know, Demon's Gate. It's just killer. Crystal Ball, Under the Oak. Love the production. You know, Leif Edling is is the guy who basically creates all this Candlemas stuff. He writes all the songs. From what I understand, he creates the riffs, too, even though he's the bass player. Uh, it, this guy just is a genius in this style of music. I think, for me, the only thing that's really missing on this album, because, you know, as a guy who got into the Messiah stuff afterwards, I mean, I bought Nightfall, and then I saw them play at Lemoore's in New York, in the city, and I was completely blown away, and I was so into Candlemas at the time. I never really thought there could be anybody else but Messiah. But when you listen to this, the vocals on this album and even the recent ones that Johan's done, he's just as good. You know, Messiah's Messiah is like the iconic guy here, but Johan is just great. I think the only thing I'm really missing is Lars Johansson, his guitar soloing. The guitar solos are really good on this too, but he has been like the lead guy in Candlemas ever since Nightfall. And he's got like this kind of like Ingve style that I think really fits well with this band. So I'm kind of missing him a little bit, but otherwise... This is a dynamite album. And then, uh, yeah, this monster. I, I love Trouble. I saw them open up for King Diamond like shortly after this album came out. I don't remember what tour it was. And I was totally hooked back then. I think this is a killer sounding album, like we said. I mean, you got Brian Slagle and Bill Matoya producing this album with the band. It's just molten. The guitar tones are so good on here. You know, uh, Bruce Franklin, one of the two guitar players, he's a big fan of Sea of Tranquility, he watches all the time. Bruce, if you're watching, you, you guys' tone on this album, absolutely killer. <laughs> I mean, Revelation, Live or Death is great. Bastards Will Pay is so good. Um, yeah, Victim of the Insane, The Tempter kicks it off in fine fashion. The Fall of Lucifer, so good. Eric Wagner's vocals, so amazing. Um, yeah, that's my number one, but these are all really, really great. So yeah. All really great. And let's take a look at the scorecard, shall we? So the winner of our album war here, three points 
to two and to two, because we had a tie for second place, Candlemas wins. Oh. Candlemas wins, <laughs> Pentagram and Trouble tied for second place, and then uh, St. Vitus and Cathedral, number three and four. Uh, I can't believe you guys put Cathedral fifth. You should be ashamed. It's an upset. <laughs> it's it's an outrage. <laughs> Call the news. Call the media. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have put $5 that Candlemas was going to win it just because. Yeah, I kind of. They're, so, they're so beloved. Yeah, good reason. They really are, yeah. Uh, yeah, I said the same thing. I mean, I, I, I was, t I kept going back and forth, but trouble just pushed it over the edge a little bit for me because, like I said, the production and and, and plus, I've been into them a lot longer, and I don't know. I tell you what, as of yesterday, trouble was my number one, but then I was rethinking it. Like it's such a good metal album. If it was more traditional, I felt like. Um, if we're going to go talk about doom, let's talk about doom. You know what I mean? And there's less elements of doom while it's still prevalent there. You know what I'm saying? But like, I love that record and I've been so good. back and forth, which one, you know, was going to be. Yeah. It's a, yeah if we there's no have, losers. Yeah. yeah. If we didn't have trouble in this cat, you know, with the other bit, then, you know, it would have like, if it was only four candle mess would have won the whole thing, I think. And like well, I you said, know, I was I was kind of converging with Ryan to try and figure out the five for this, and we we had which did this one come up. I think we talked about Solitude of Turn. Yeah, why right? did you? Why oh, did you? Uh, that's think that's one of the bands I was I was saying to you. Yeah. About, Solitude of Turn is yeah, because yeah, this band. is a fucking phenomenal day. How about I? You guys know ISO, I S O L E. Do I know the name. Go check them out. Why not Witchfinder General? I love that guy's voice. I can't think of his name. Witchfinder General would be... Uh, I guess yeah, they're kind of like a trouble. It's like doom, yeah. but heavy metal. But, but I, I, I mean, I, and The more I thought about it, the more I was like, well, because we could always save them for a new wave of British heavy metal debut. Yeah, and they fit in pretty nicely there. Too. Yeah, they fit in even more nicely there. So I was like, all right, you know, because, yeah, I mean, there's this... There's, there's, we could have done 10 here, you know, so it's... Mm. There's so many, but... At, at uh, Hell's Heroes Fest this year, I saw the uh, the Solitude Eternus reunion, and it was... I got Everybody was like, oh, it's going to be cool, right? You know, they haven't played in forever, and they're kind of an iconic Texas doom band, but they, they took a fucking, like, fire axe to everybody's forehead. Like, they just <laughs> blew the fucking <laughs> roof off the Their albums are pretty so good. It was like I'm sure it's on YouTube if you want to watch it, but it just was absolutely fucking incredible. Everybody was sitting there with their jaw on the ground, like droopy dog, you know. Uh, yeah. Hey, but is Rob back in the band now that he got left Candlemas? Is he back in solitude? I think again? he is. Yeah, I think he's in the band. I don't want to misspeak. If I am, someone correct me in the comments. But yeah, I was a little buzzed when they were playing. But dude, I was signing on the hillside like Jesus fucking hell. These are so heavy. You know, just you can just feel the riffs just like getting you right in the chest too. So, uh, to uh, throw a little knot to solitude to turn this in there, but uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, right so that's our uh, album war. Candlemas reigns supreme today, but it was a pretty close battle all the way across. So for those watching, let us know how you would rank these down in the uh, comments below. So of course, Candlemas, Pentagram, Saint Vitus, Cathedral, and Trouble, all great debuts all worthy of your time. If you haven't listened to any of these albums, well, you know your homework. Go out and check them out. And uh, we'll see you next time here on the Hudson Valley Squares. Visit us on the web at www.citytranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn, all the damn time. time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Please subscribe if you haven't already and <laughs> click on that notification bell to get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Have a safe and happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, for all you, does, does anybody trick or treat anymore? I don't even know. Or maybe you got Halloween parties to go to, or maybe you just want to hang out at your friend's house and listen to fucking Doom. Yeah, that's Halloween right there. So see you guys oh, all later on for Karen, for Craig, for Ryan, for the Count, for Rob. For cans, I am Pete. Have a good week, everybody. See you next time here on the Hudson Valley Squares. Take care.